glorious ambience. What's up dogs, it's Cameron with Venus Theory, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating atmospheres and drones for your music. So these are a little bit different in pads in that they're more kind of a soundscape and general vibe giver to a track. So let's dive in and get started. All right, so in this video we're here to talk about creating atmospheres and stuff. So this isn't really pads, this is kind of a different process, and it's very weird and difficult and it, it just takes a lot of practice but i kind of just wanted to show you guys um, my process behind creating that i don't know world that a track lives in so when it comes to this stuff especially for genres like future garage or wave or you know the more chill and ambient side of things a lot of this stems from kind of highlighting one emotion or one feeling so I, I think the biggest part of this is you kind of have to know beforehand what you're aiming for. You know, is it something sad? You know, did you go camping one weekend and there was just this moment that really stuck out to you and that's kind of what inspired you to make something? You know, you really have to suck all that into your gooey inner bits before you can dive in and create something that's not to say that you can't just sit there and create atmospheres i do it all the time but i feel like to really get it right you have to have an idea in mind so with that being said there are a couple important elements and things to note um, a lot of this is textural and a lot of it is very basic stuff that's just kind of extrapolated on in a weird way with tons of processing so um in this video i kind of just wanted to do one atmosphere and kind of show you how I would go about creating that. So in this case, um, I've got this sample here, which is some rain. And then maybe one of these sunny day samples. Because those kind of work together. So we're going to grab this guy, move it in, and find one of these to layer with it. Probably this one. Excellent. So this is Unique Samples Volume 2, which I believe I found on reddit.com slash r slash drum kits, which I highly recommend checking out. So from here, I've got my two kind of core elements, and I'm going to duplicate this out, overlap them, and I'm going to hit X to crossfade them so they're both roughly the same length. And then we can loop this out and kind of start picking apart the different elements because this isn't something that's going to be a dominant element in the track it's going to sit in the background so from here normally what i would want to do is know the key of my song so let's say we want to make this in f minor so from here we might grab something like diva to create just kind of a general sound bed underneath this so i just want to create kind of a big pad more or less so I'm going to grab the Jupiter 8 here and her Jupe 8 and probably just do a low pass and a bit of a high pass. We'll set this to rough mode at 12 dB per octave and up the attack. So maybe up it a bit more. Give this some chorus. Maybe slow the rate down. And then we're going to grab a big old reverb to mess around with. So we'll go ahead and close this out and get a nice big reverb of some kind because this is just like I said going to sit behind everything so it's not very important that it's a very clean and clear element. So I'm just going to get a big insanely large reverb and draw some chords under this. So you will usually want to do this at tempo so I would kind of try and pick a tempo for your track beforehand and then start creating the sound bed and then adding your drums and stuff afterwards. Or bounce it out to audio, note your tempo and key, and use it later. So let's go ahead and just create kind of a chord progression under this. So I'm not really doing the full chord progression. I'm kind of just trying to create an emotion and a feel for the track. So all I'm doing is just an F minor chord 
and walking the F up to a G, so then we're getting G, G sharp, and C. Which creates kind of a weird tension, and then I'm gonna walk back to F to release it. So we'll go ahead and just track that now. So that's done and we can go ahead and just duplicate this out and we should be pretty much set so we want this to be 32 bars or so so that should do it and now we've got this nice big sound bed to start playing with so from here we could kind of start blending these elements together So now we need to start worrying about creating the movement. So I think with this sample, what we could do is use something in the modulation tab like auto pan and set this to be fairly slow, make it not as wide. So this will kind of move around our heads a bit. And then from here we could maybe add in a quick delay, fairly low mix, set it to ping pong and lo-fi if you have H delay. So now this is just going to kind of move around on its own and provide more of a subtle texture to everything. With this guy, we could probably add in a light reverb of some kind, just to give it a bit of space. And now this is starting to sound good. So we could probably thicken this up a little bit. We don't want it to be too overwhelming. We just want it to kind of poke out a bit. So we'll probably just use a bit of saturation and then get some EQ going. So that would be pretty much the way I go about doing this. And now we might want to hunt around for some other samples. So we could maybe dig through, uh, oh, who knows? We could find something interesting. Um, let's go ahead and dig around in my SFZ files. Because there are a bunch of those that I got from somewhere on the internet that I don't remember. But we know this is in F minor, so we could probably grab We can maybe grab this piano sample and then maybe try and find some kind of stringed something. So maybe a cello. All right, so this is F sharp, so we need to transpose this down a semitone. And now we can kind of start working these in. So let's say this piano here. Um, we could do maybe a reversed sound. See how that kind of blends in. Cool. And what could we do with this cello? So let's go ahead and set this to musical mode. And then we can kind of start getting more creative with these. So let's do another reverb over here. We'll make this fairly large, mix it in about a little under halfway. And I just want to fade that off. So maybe we'll use that to accent the end of every cycle of the diva chords going underneath and then we can start doing stuff with this cello sample 
So maybe we'll get rid of musical mode and just kind of place this in where we feel it needs to happen. So I want this to kind of fade in and be relatively gentle. So one thing I'll note here is this is going to get pretty repetitive, so you might want to take a bit more time than I am with, you know, making variations on this. So maybe we could find one more sample to go in here somewhere, uh, perhaps a clarinet, maybe a flute. Sure. So now we're going to find another spot to fill in, which would probably be right about here. And now we're going to start processing these other sounds. So this piano, we've got a big reverb. Might sound cool with some bit crushing. So let's go ahead and try that. Neat. Let's play around with the cello now. So this sounds a bit obviously like a cello. So I'm going to add a chorus. Maybe we could do... Uh, let's try some dot tube on that just for a bit of thickness. And then from here we could maybe do something with like a comb filter. Try and find a good spot for it. All right. So we're kind of getting this issue where the cello fades out a bit weird, so then we could just grab another reverb of some kind, make it very, very big, and mix it in. We should get kind of a nice filling sound. So maybe even on top of this we could use, like, the formant filter here. Something like that might be kind of neat. This flute, we could do maybe a nice big delay on, so we'll set this to lo-fi ping pong, mix it in like halfway, and set this to dotted quarter notes, something like that. Maybe use a different reverb on this one. I really love the towel reverb for stuff like this. And then maybe before that, we could do like pitch shifting on it, something like that. So let's maybe up this to a fifth and see what that sounds like. So now we're just gonna blend these elements in. So now we've got this going, and this would work really well to start layering some stuff on top of, so maybe we could grab one more thing. And create a nice kind of dubbed out delay, so we'll grab another delay to sit on top of this. Set it to ping pong. Grab another towel reverb and crank it up really high. Maybe some slight bit crushing. Mix this in very, very low and just kind of blend it into accent. Maybe the one and the three. Drop it down.
Or maybe we just want to do reversed harp samples. See what that sounds like. So all of this is to say it's about blending in different things that help to create the vibe that you want to go for. So in this case, this does kind of follow along with that theme of rainy and cold outside and I don't know, maybe it's winter and you're sad because you couldn't get the straw inside your juice box or something. And, you know, like I said, this is just one of those things that's very, very hard to explain because it gets kind of abstract in that it's all about the emotion and finding stuff that will suit that but um this is the basic overview of it is just take a couple elements that provide the world and then start layering in stuff on top of that to provide the chords and you know the key of the song because it's going to be more of a droning element and then maybe add in some extra ear candy to provide that evolution to it and then you know you could maybe pan some of these elements out a bit use the auto pan on some other stuff so we could drag the auto pan onto this heart maybe um this piano you could run it through a guitar amp you know there's so many ways to create these big lush soundscapes and then from here you could take this and run it into cecilia and see what happens so anyways i think that'll do it for this video and that's it for this video guys so thanks for watching and i hope you learned something as always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.